Hi, welcome to Essential IT and Security Skills. I'm Charles Redmond, Master Trainer, here to guide you through the essentials that you are gonna need to land the job that you are looking for. In this series, we're gonna talk about essential PC skills. I'm gonna walk you through everything from software to hardware. Most people know me as a cybersecurity expert. Well, I couldn't have gotten there without learning the basics first. That's what this series is gonna do. And then we'll move on in some later series with some more advanced concepts and techniques. But remember, it all starts with the basics. It starts right here, the essential PC skills. So what's inside all of this stuff? Again, it's back to the basics from clock multipliers and 64-bit processing all the way to virtualization and integrated memory controllers. All modern CPUs run at some multiple of the system clock speed. In earlier computers, the CPU ran at the same speed as the motherboard. Technicians had to set jumpers on older motherboards to configure the multiplier. However, now the motherboard is automatically configured through the CPU ID. With newer and newer computers getting faster and faster, we've entered a world of 64-bit processing. Most new computers support 64-bit processing and can run operating systems and applications compatible with 64-bit processing, like Windows 7. However, it's important to remember that CPUs still support the 32-bit processing or the older operating systems like Windows XP, but the primary benefit of 64-bit processing is now the support for more than four gigs of memory. Next, let's talk about virtualization. Modern CPUs, because they've gotten faster, have built-in support for running more than one operating system. This enables hardware-based virtualization support, making virtualization easier and more resource efficient. Modern CPUs can process multiple commands and parts of commands in parallel or at the same time. This is important because the old CPUs had to work in a linear fashion. This is made possible through multiple pipelines, dedicated cache, and the capability to work with multiple threads or programs at one time. So what's a pipeline? No, it's not what's gonna fill your gas tank. The pipeline are the stages that the CPU take. The four basic stages are fetch, decode, execute, and write. Newer PCs have many stages in the pipeline. It allows them to work more efficiently without increasing the clock speed and damaging the computer. The cache reduces the wait states or the amount of time by using built-in very high-speed RAM called static RAM or SRAM. The SRAM preloads as many instructions as possible and dumps it in what's called the L1 cache because it's used first. And then cache on the motherboard called the L2 cache, it's used second. So now we've started to complete our picture. We have our RAM, we have our address bus, we have our man or men in the box now, we have the code book, we have a way to communicate with them. It's all starting to take shape. So the cache uses the address bus and external data bus connecting the CPU, the MCC, and the RAM all together were lumped into a single term called the front side bus. Connection between the CPU and the L2 cache became known as the backside bus. Now let's move to multi-threading. Multi-threading is when the CPU simulates the actions of a second processor and it enhances the efficiency, but does not increase the processing power. You might have heard this referred to as hyperthreading. Now the difference from hyperthreading, we move to multi-core processing. Now we've put multiple men in a box, multiple CPUs into a common core or into a single chip creating a multi-core architecture. Almost all modern CPUs have an IMC or an integrated memory controller. It's used to optimize the flow of information in and out of the CPU. 
and now video processing or the graphics processing unit. Graphics processors can handle certain tasks much more efficiently than the standard CPU and it enhances the overall performance of the computer because it's reducing the energy use, size, and cost, which makes it ideal for mobile devices. So the graphics processing unit or the integrated graphics processing unit is a whole nother chip attached to the last level cache. So here you see core four, three, two, and one, as well as a dedicated or shared graphics processing unit. So which CPU is right for you? First, it's important to get the right CPU for the right purpose. Remember the chart? You need to determine if the motherboard supports Intel or AMD. This is important because you need to determine the type of socket the motherboard has. The a certification expects you to learn which processors go with which socket types. You need to be sure to pay careful attention to CPU pins, the power supply, and always make sure you have adequate cooling. And then of course, consider whether to leave the CPU at its standard settings, or maybe you need to overclock it. But remember, overclocking can be extremely dangerous to your PC. So what are these socket types? You have LGAs or LAN grid arrays, you have PGAs or pin grid arrays, and you have zero insertion force or ZIF sockets. Here you see the difference between them. To remove the CPU, all you have to do is move the release arm and that will fully open the socket. Remember, CPUs run at extremely high speeds, so they need proper cooling. Most CPUs use a combination of heatsink and cooling fan assembly to keep them within normal operating temperatures. There are, however, specialized CPU coolers that are third-party products or third-party heatsinks and fan assemblies for a variety of CPUs. They usually exceed the standards of the OEM heat sinks and the amount of heat that they can dissipate. If you require maximum cooling, you might want to consider liquid cooling. Basically, it uses water through a metal block that sits on top of your CPU to absorb the heat. To install whatever cooling system, you need to use a small amount of thermal compound, or you'll hear it called heat dope, to the CPU before attaching the heat sink. But be careful. Applying too much or too little can cause the CPU to overheat and fail. Here you see what's called a standout on the motherboard. It provides power to the CPU fan. Here's how you apply the thermal compound and put together the OEM heatsink and fan assembly. And just to make sure it stays properly in place on the underside of the motherboard, you'll have mounted screws that you will screw the entire assembly into. So now that you have it all put back together, you have to make sure that the motherboard speed, multiplier, and voltage are all set properly. Some motherboards enable you to adjust these settings, and some people intentionally run their system at clock speeds higher than the CPU is rated. I'm not going to tell you what is right and what is wrong. It all depends on what you or your customer's requirements are, just remember, overclocking can damage the PC. However, if the situation is warranted, to overclock, you'll do that through jumpers, CMOS settings, or software configuration. It usually involves increasing the bus speed for the system and increasing the voltage going into the CPU. Now you can see how overclocking can absolutely damage, lock up, or destroy a CPU. Here's a look at how to manually override the CPU settings in the BIOS setup. We'll talk more about the BIOS later. So just in case you make a mistake in these settings and you need to go back to the defaults, you can always go back and use the CMOS clear jumper. Now let's talk about troubleshooting some common issues with CPUs like overheating, perhaps you use too much heat dope, or not enough heat dope. You may have a faulty fan power connection, or possibly you're running into what we would label as catastrophic failure, like the blue screen of death. 
these can all be indicative of problems with the CPU. There you have it. It's pretty simple. Remember, everything starts with the basics. Once you have these understood, everything gets a whole lot easier. If you have any questions or even just a comment, feel free to leave them below and I do read each and every one of them. I'll see you next time.